Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 20 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the practical application of server.mappath method. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 19 of this video series where we have discussed the basics of server.mappath method. We know that server.mappath method returns the physical path for a given virtual path. This method can be used in several different ways depending on the characters that we pass in to this method. The dot character returns the current physical directory of the executing page, whereas dot dot returns the parent directory of the executing page and tilde symbol resolves to the root directory of the web application project. We have discussed about this in part 19 of this video series. Let's actually look at an example. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application project and if you look at this page in electronics folder.aspx page. It's present in electronics folder which is present in categories and this categories present uh, folder is present in sample web project. Okay now let's say on this page I want to drag and drop a drop down list control and then within I want to bind this drop down list control to countries.xml file. If you look at this countries.xml file it has got you know a list of countries here so I want to display these countries within this drop down list control. So obviously if you look at you know the locations of these two files the countries.xml file is present in countries folder which is present in data and this data is present in the root directory of the web application project whereas page in electronics folder.aspx is present in electronics folder which is present in categories and that's present in the root directory. So if this page has to find this file it has to navigate to the root directory and from there go to the data folder and then to the countries folder and then retrieve this file. Okay, so let's write simple code to actually read that XML file. And we have seen in, in the previous sessions of this video series how to bind an XML file to a drop down list. Alright, so since we are going to use a data set, data set is present in system.data namespace, so let's import that. Let's create a data set because that's the simplest way. Uh, to read the XML file. So dataset ds is equal to new dataset ds.readXML. So obviously to this method we have to pass in you know the path of the file. Okay so obviously if you have to pass in the physical path of the file then you have to retrieve that. So how do we retrieve the physical path of the file? We can use the server.mappath method. Okay because to server.mappath method you can pass in a virtual path which gets resolved to the physical path of that particular file okay so i want to get to the you know this particular file now if i just say server.mappath and then if i specify the name of the file countries.xml by default what's going to happen the server.mappath will actually look for that file within the executing directory. Now this is the current directory where this page is present. So when you say countries.xml, the server.mappath method, you know, tries to look in the in that directory itself. But we don't have countries.xml within that folder. Okay? It's actually present in countries.xml, I mean countries folder. So if you have to find that, you have to come all the way to the root directory from the root directory you have to go to the you know data directory within which you will have to go to countries and then find this countries.xml okay so obviously to get to the root directory of the web application project since you are two levels deep in relation to the root directory of the web application project folder you will have to use dot dot forward slash dot dot so dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash so these two dots will navigate me back to the categories these two dots will navigate me back to the root directory so from the root directory I have to go to the data folder and then to the countries folder so obviously data and then countries forward slash countries dot xml so this is the virtual path that I have to pass in to the server dot map path method which can return me the correct physical path of this particular file 
And once we have read that data into the data set, we can simply bind that to the drop-down list. So drop-down list one dot data source is equal to that data set and drop down list one dot data bind. And obviously, we need to specify the data text field and data value field of the drop down list. We have spoken about you know binding an XML file to a drop down list uh, in the previous sessions of this video series. So data text field and we need to specify the data value field as well. So if you look at this, I want the data text field to be the country name and data value field to be the country ID. Let's copy and paste it here. OK, that's it. So if we run this now, as you might expect, we will be able to correctly read that XML file and display the data within uh, you know, the drop-down list. Obviously, I think we binded the country ID as the text. Yeah, that's why we see the country IDs instead of country names. So let's correct that. All right, so if we run this now, as you might expect, we will see the country names within the drop-down list. OK, so we can see all the countries there. So, but then, is this the best way to do this? Maybe not, because, you know, it works here fine without no issues, because you have computed how to navigate to the root directory, because I am two levels deep you know, relative to the root web application directory. I use dot dot for slash dot dot. But just imagine if I want to display the same drop-down list and same data in this page, in page in root directory.aspx. Let's try to copy this and paste it within this page. Okay, is this going to work? No, this will break. First of all, let's correct this error. Since data set is present in system.data, let's import that namespace there. Okay, and we don't have a drop down list on this page, so let's drag and drop a drop down list control onto this page. Okay, so now if you look at this one, when I compile the solution, I don't get any compilation error. Okay, but then when we actually run this app, this page, you know, this page in root directory.aspx, this page is going to crash. And you can understand why. Because if you look at this page, this is already in the root directory of the web application project. And then look at this. So when you say dot dot, it tries to go to the parent directory. Now, beyond the root of your web application project, you don't have any other directory. You cannot navigate. So trying to navigate beyond you know, the root directory of the project will throw an error. So obviously, this will return an error. OK, so that's why you know, anytime you want to navigate to the root directory, I always suggest use the tilt character. But let's run this and see if we actually get an error. We should get an error. OK, so cannot use leading to exit above the top directory. And what's the top directory for us? You know, the sample web folder. You cannot navigate beyond that folder. That way we get, that's why we get this error. On the other hand, look at this. Even this page works fine. Why? Because you're two levels deep, dot, dot, forward slash, dot, dot, will correctly navigate you to the root. From the root, you want to go to the data folder and then into the countries and then read countries.xml. And that's what this says. This works fine. Instead of making this this complicated, we know that we have to come back to the root directory and then go to the data folder and then countries folder. You can simply use the tilde character, and that's the best way to do this. Okay, no matter how deep you are in the folder level in relation to the you know root directory of the web application project, when, once you use tilde character, you know that will automatically be resolved to the root directory of the web application project. So now, if I copy paste this code in any page in my web application project, it's just going to work fine as long as you have this countries.xml within this path. Okay, so if I copy paste this code here, it's going to work without any issues. So I run this now, it's going to work exactly the same as page in electronics folder.aspx. Okay, so we can see the list of countries there. If I try to run this page, the same code should run there as well. 
All right. So the till symbol resolves to the root application directory no matter how deep you are in the folder hierarchy. This is the advantage of using till over the two dots. And this, this code with work will work you know, from any folder in our application. Okay. Whereas the following code will only work from folders that are two levels deeper relative to the root directory of the application. Because why? You use dot dot forward slash dot dot. You know, a single dot dot will resolve to the parent directory. If you have another dot dot following that, then it tries to go to the, you know, the parent directory above that. And if you are already in the root, and if you try to use dot dot, you cannot navigate beyond the root directory. You will get a runtime error, not a compile time error. And runtime errors are always dangerous. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.